News View, here for you. Hello and welcome again to News View on a Friday night in Champaign-Urbana, Springfield. Um, tonight's top story... And the top story is of uh, the America USA is in the red. The deficit in July totaled $165.4 billion of the government uh, paid nearly $20 billion interest on the debt and an additional $9.8 billion to help the unemployed. And this is from the Wall Street Journal. We continue with federal spending ellipsing revenue for the 22nd straight time. And that's according to the Treasury Department. And the, the deficit is $165.4 billion, but it's a bit smaller than $169.5 billion that was expected by economists pulled by the Dow Jones Newswires, but was the second highest for the month on record. The highest was $180.68 billion in July of last year, 2009. But it, they also said that usually the government does run a deficit in July anyway, and it's the 10th month of the fiscal year. So the government spent this year $1.169 trillion more than it made. And if you want more on that, look at the uh, Wall Street Journal report about the deficit. You can find that online or probably um, in your Wall Street Journal if you get one copy. And that was by Jeff Bader and Daryl A. Hughes. Moving right along to the next story, uh, Dateline Washington um, here Students silenced for singing anthem at Lincoln Memorial. Um, now these students were singing um, My Country Tis of Thee, I believe, and they were confronted by a security guard. Uh, no, they were singing the national anthem. Um, this was the Young America's Foundation. They were singing the anthem, but were told by U.S. Park Police that they were in violation of federal law for their impromptu performance that consisted of a demonstration in the area that must remain completely country neutral. Um, one of the students said that the singing was spontaneous, unplanned, and not intended to be political. Um, they, he told Fox News that he was dumbfounded by the uh, the the uh, confrontation of the uh, officer and the, them. The group. This is from NBC Washington, this story. And we'll go on to the next story now. Um, one state in the country 
And this is from NBC again, NBC LA this time. One state in the country, uh, California, is going to um, pay people issuing you by issuing IOUs to some people, possibly this year, August 27th or August 31st, uh, when the payments to schools are due. The announcement in the upside down world of California's budget policy politics felt almost like good news, said NBCLA. Um, Governor Schwarzenegger raised the possibility that there may not be a budget agreement this summer or even in the fall if demands aren't met. Um, so California is in another sticky place with, with their um, money practices. And at marketwire.com comes our next story. Kankakee, a Kankakee-based law firm with offices in Champaign and Kankakee and some other local places is changing its name from um, Kankakee. So it's changing its name from Spiros and Wall and is changing it to Spiro's Law, effective August 12, 2010. Uh, well, that's today, or yesterday when you're watching this. And one more story here. Uh, um, former President George W. Bush and Laura Bush greeted 150 surprise troops as they were arriving home from the war in Iraq and Afghanistan. The, these troops were very happy and pleased to meet the former president, George W. Bush. And um, from, from what it says here, all were happy and think more highly of George W. Bush after this surprise appearance. And our next story will come after this break. Stay tuned. And we're back here at News View with our next story. And um, this is Google Street View last year caught a picture of a girl laying on the street. Uh, people thought she was dead, but she was just a 10-year-old girl playing with um, another girl girl, I guess, and she just thought she'd play dead in the street right next to the gutter. And this created a stir when people saw it because they thought there was really a dead body. And this was, this was in um, a sub suburban location 
in in Middle Road, Worcester, in Britain. Uh, the girl is fine. She said she didn't know anything about the Google Street View car recording her, and she fell over while she was playing with her friend and thought it would be funny to play dead. And she thinks it's funny how she, she, her news is of this and the pictures are on the internet. And her mother, who is age 43, said she was amused that the image had caused such a fuss among her neighbors. Now, what would you do if you saw a picture, I wonder, if you saw a picture of what looks like a dead person in a roadway uh, next to a parked car? Uh, you would probably think that they were dead, but this was just turned out in the still Google pictures to be a girl playing dead. And the next story is Governor, Illinois Governor Quinn, Pat Quinn, has been making a tour around the state to encourage shoppers to shop during a statewide sales tax holiday, which runs until uh, the night of August 15th, 2010. And opponents of the, this tax break say that the state shouldn't be passing up tax revenue because of the economy. But Governor Quinn has traveled to Champaign uh, Marion and Bloomington uh, to encourage shoppers to shop now in time for back to school shopping through the 15th to save money. And that is that story. And the next story, uh, General Motors CEO of uh, Ed, Edward E. White Care Jr. is stepping down after the automaker reported a profit of $1.3 billion. And he says this was his plan all along, and the board knew it was his public duty to uh, lead the company back to greatness. And, uh, and he didn't want to stay a day beyond that, he said. So the um, CEO of General Motors is stepping down. As you may know, uh, General Motors was bailed out and basically taken over by the government uh, instead of going bankrupt. Um, now, many people think if they'd gone bankrupt, it would have been better for General Motors and the country, but other people don't agree. Uh, Whitker is 68 degrees and became the temporary CEO in December um, of General Motors. And the next story. Um, HP Hewlett Packard, the computer company, um, their um, top herd aide has resigned. Uh, now he was an aide to former CEO um, Mark Mark Hurd and with people who knew about it, they called it a key conduit in the hiring of Jody Fisher, the woman who was at the center of the herd expenses scandal at HP. Um, after working as a contractor for Hewlett Packard, Fisher 
filed a sexual harassment suit against Heard, setting in motion the chain of events leading to his departure from the firm. And this is reported by James Rogers in New York at thestreet.com. You can see that. And the next story comes to us from CNN Politics. The Senate has approved a $600 million uh, border security fund. The uh, Charles Schumer of New York and Ben Cardin of Maryland Two senators returned from their August recesses on Thursday to give approval for a $600 million emergency funding to help secure the U.S.-Mexican border, Mexico border. Um, the House of Representatives already approved this, and... The bill passed by unanimous consent and GOP leaders agreed. And the bill is funded in part by imposing higher fees on personnel companies that bring foreign workers into the United States. And our last story is a little more fun. Um, customers have voted on their favorite restaurant chains. This from SlashFood.com. Um, the number one rated restaurant chain in the country, according to this poll, is the Cheesecake Factory. Um, coming down from that, next second best voted highest is Red Robin Gourmet Burgers, uh, the Olive Garden and Ru Ruby Tuesday got the third highest scores. Cracker Barrel actually received number four as, the, as being the most popular family chain in, by the number of votes. And next in line was Outback Steakhouse. Um, but according to Slash Food Readers, Applebee's um, came in at 11.0%. The Cheesecake Factory won there too. And you, you can see more um, you can see more about this on slashfood.com and you can, you can look for customers vote on favorite restaurant chains, an, a, an article by Jennifer Wawinski uh, from August 6th. And th this has been your edition of Newscast for this weekend. For News View, I'm Michael Badger, and if you have any questions or comments, you can email me at mbadger at newsview.info, or you can call the station. And if you have any news stories, you can um, submit them to and see you again next week, hopefully. Well, I can't see you, of course, but hopefully you can see me and hear me next week again on News View. Stay tuned for the weather. And here is your News View weather forecast for the weekend, um, tonight, Friday night, 73 degrees Fahrenheit with clouds. So it will be cloudy and 73 degrees Fahrenheit for Friday night tonight. And for Saturday, 93 degrees Fahrenheit will be your high temperature with a 40% uh, uh, chance of uh, possibility of precipitation and thunderstorms. And Saturday night, 
a low temperature of 71 degrees Fahrenheit. As for Sunday, um, 89 degrees will be your high um, with rain likely. And Sunday night, more rain with a temperature of 67 degrees Fahrenheit. This has been your News View weather forecast for the weekend of August 13th, 2010. Can you imagine our world without love? Love is so important to every one of us, and yet often it's not as lasting or fulfilling as we might hope. But there is one perfect love, God's love, which can change our lives and will never let us down. We're your neighbors, the people of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, and we want you to know that with Jesus Christ, love really can be all it was meant to be. 